So here I'm again, you know, meeting you again. I guess it's been about two or three years since I last saw you at your office, though. Oh, at the office, yes. Mm. We saw each other in China. China, right? And then we and we filmed in San Antonio. San Antonio, per- last yeah, year. Yeah, correct. That's when I last saw you. I really loved your comment. <laughs> I don't remember which one, but you. I do believe you caught me after a couple of tequila and cokes. So it was probably <laughs> rawly uh, honest. <laughs> <laughs> so, over the time, Paul, uh, I mean, this is what I found. After I've traveled, you know, U.S., watching all those prosthetic surgeons, reality mm-hmm. surgeons, we are fundamentally different. Uh, well, from the oncologist, I'll say. Oncologists do treat, you know, life or death matters. But we as a prosthetic surgeon, we really don't treat life or death matters. But we do treat for the quality of life, patient's quality of life. Do you think, does it has anything to do with your own, you know? Are we dealing with life and death? And I do believe that you might have interviewed one of my patients today where his entire life is his penis. So it oh, is yeah. kind of life and death. <laughs> and uh, that kind of life and death to these people means everything. Mm. But the fact of the matter is, mm. the, the craft that you and I mm. have engaged in has such a high satisfaction rate mm. that it, unlike cancer surgeons that have to deal with terrible losses mm. and terrible pain and terrible suffering, 95 plus, and I'm sure in your hands, probably 98, 99% plus percentage of patients are thrilled. Mm. And then you do give them back their life. And because dedicated implanters like yourself have such great patient satisfaction rates, Mm. of course, your your office is going to be a happy place. (laughs) And, And I hope... I'm asking you, I hope that transfers to your life. And I hope that you feel pleasure in doing with what, what you do. Watching you, you know, uh, you were always a happy person. Yeah. <laughs> Full of energy, you know. You're such a, like a once my friend told me, you know, such a macho bravado you are. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, you've been in this, you know, practice way longer than I do. How was it you know, when you first started and how do you think, let's say, you know, you compared when you started and current, you know, things. And uh, let's make a comparison with some other oncologists, you know, who may have been in the days when you started. As an oncologist, he's still practicing. I think there's a huge change. Huge. huge difference. Yeah. Huge difference. Huge difference. And I'm not going to mention any of my colleagues' names, but <laughs> you see life wear them down. Because you are you're dealing with sadness and pain and suffering. Mm. If you look around at the art in the room, mm. this is a, a Cuban patient. That's a Rubenesque Cuban patient. Ah. This is a Peruvian patient. Oh. So the kind of things that people bring to me is is nothing but joy, and it's because once again going back to our craft, it just it brings not just one person many people joy so Mm. um when i do look at my my colleagues that and and i I have to hand it to them you know they're doing surgery that is just it's difficult and it's a a lot of follow-up um but it definitely does wear them down Mm. and i think that there's fairly good statistics in the literature that looks at uh surgeon fatigue Mm. and i i guarantee you if they looked at urologic surgeon fatigue and they Mm. looked at people like you and i you get younger and stronger <laughs> every year. And somehow I was able to just have twins five weeks ago with oh. my wife. So <laughs> and I don't know when. Um, it, it is a, you know, this, this, this is a fun, fun life. You know, I, I tell medical students that rotate through this office that this is not typical of mm. being a doctor. Mm. You know, we, we, we don't wear white coats. <laughs> we don't have a desk, the desk is against the wall. Yeah. Uh, patients, yeah, you, you put your hand, you, I know you put your hand on your patient. I yeah. know you touch them and you touch them in ways, you, I mean, you hold their balls, mm. for God's sake. <laughs> so, um, it's, I couldn't have picked a better career. It's a great niche. Mm. And um, I, I, I know that you traveled around the country and you, and, and you got a little taste of everybody's 
personality and Sean brought his own personality back to Korea and soared to the top in less than, much less time than I did. No. And it, it took me a long time to, to get to where I am. But um, I've never thought of it, but I, I'm glad I picked this, this craft.